EVE Online is a space-based massively multiplayer RPG released all the way back in 2003 and since then has garnered a reputation for its scale and complexity as well as its epic player battles and player-led economies and politics. EVE for me has always been something I had heard countless stories about but never dived in myself to check out the game. Today we rectify that as I take a look at the new player experience as well as the brand new new player experience set for release soon and bring you my first impressions. I'm Mitch Mannix and this is EVE Online First Impressions in 2021. First booting up the game, you'll be asked to pick a faction and customize your character, which serves as the game names it as your avatar, as the game is played entirely from within your ships. This choice, although appearing significant, will only change your appearance, starting zone, and the frigate and weapon skills you start with, allowing for total freedom of choice over the game's wide range of ships and technologies later down the line. Once all set up, the game begins with a set of tutorial missions running you through some of the core concepts of understanding the basics such as ship movement, warping and combat. During this, you'll be addressing your ship AI, which was surprisingly well written with some humorous lines thrown in to break up the monotony of this kind of content. My database of ancient idioms informs me that you should drive it like you stole it. In other words, speed up. With the intro mission out of the way, EVE then provides new players with a number of NPC agents that offer introductory quest lines that cover four of the game's core features, consisting of security, combat, mining, industry, business, and exploration. It's worth noting that at the time of this recording, that this month, CCP are releasing an updated version of the introductory quest line. And to give the most up-to-date information possible, I jumped into the game's test server to run through this also. In all, this update packages the tutorial mission in a far more cinematic and bombastic feeling experience, and ties it more seamlessly together with the starting of the first agent mission questlines, giving it a very polished feeling, as well as a little more context around how and why you came to be starting out. The introductory agent missions will give the player a run through of the core mechanics for each activity, as well as provide some entry level equipment and even some ships to get you started if you feel after finishing the quest line that that particular activity is something you want to continue delving into. After speaking with both longer standing players as well as others that have just started, and even one of the player community's game devs, the new additions have been very successful in easing newcomers into the world of EVE and reducing the stress of being thrown into a world with so many complex moving parts. I too can testament to this, as EVE has always to me seemed like something that I would take weeks to wrap my head around, and for that reason, I've always been something that I felt somewhat out of my reach, due to the time and commitment required to get a foothold. If you have ever looked at EVE with the same thought in mind, it may be a perfect time, especially once the update drops later this month, to take another look. EVE doesn't give you a handhold on your next decision following the intro missions, and in my eyes, quite rightly. EVE is a sandbox MMO, and your journey is forged by you and the players around you. If the game held your hand too much, it would start to extract the moments and experiences that can only occur through natural exploration and decision making. With the agent introductory missions completed, I looked to my next move. After a quick glance at a few recommendations for a place to settle my base of operations, I charted a route to Jita, one of the game's trade hubs. After bundling my gear into a large freighter ship, I undocked and began to make my journey across the system towards my destination. It was during this that I felt something quite profound. After looking up details around the game's star systems, I found out that there are essentially three classes of security in the star systems. HiSec, where NPC members of the Concord faction will swiftly demolish any would-be troublemakers. LowSec, where attackers won't be stopped, but slapped with a reputation hit and a chance to become wanted. And NullSec, where all bets are off and players are left to govern themselves out in the darker reaches of space. I saw on my route to the trade hub that I would be passing some sections of low sec space and my eyes quickly widened knowing that all of my gear up until this point was with me and if I was targeted by any pirates or gankers I would need to make a swift getaway. Now you may be thinking why is he telling us this? And there is a point to be made. In my experience with Eve 
I found that even doing typically mundane tasks such as moving my stuff from one place to another was thrilling. Gone is the automatic toggling off of PvP in high player count zones, the feeling of safety wandering around quest hubs. EVE's Wild West makes such tasks such as this, or mining out an asteroids for materials, feel far more enthralling due to the potential dangers lurking out in the stars. Even staring out over the game's map and seeing bright red star systems indicating the dangerous null-sec security zones made me feel eager to delve deeper knowing that there could be any number of rivaling factions, player pirates, or lucrative opportunities contained within. Somewhat similar to that feeling when you wander up to a zone border in MMOs such as World of Warcraft and stare out over the land at much higher level mobs looking ahead to the challenge that awaits. After making the jumps through space, I arrived at Jita and was blown away by the scale of this trade hub space station. Up until this point, I had been frequenting stations that I assumed would be considered on the larger side, but this trade hub was huge and with other ships flying all around and even a tannoy system that plays out over the station with reports and announcements absolutely nailing the feeling of being at the heart of a thriving civilization in space. With my training wheels now orbiting a nearby moon, I grabbed a new ship from the market and started the process of fitting it with weapons and gadgets with the mind for exploration. A very viable money maker in EVE. Fitting out a ship can be very daunting considering if you are defeated the ship is lost forever, can make staring out at the massive amount of systems and variants feel stressful. The tutorial missions can be helpful somewhat with some of the basics, but EVE is still very much a game that will need far more consideration when starting out than something such as Final Fantasy or ESO. Reading some guides or watching a few videos to get more info. The game does provide a very nice feature to assist in not only helping new players get a decent ship together, but also for sharing builds and ideas through the ability to save and share ship fits with others. Want a good starter build for a new frigate you've just bought? Well, you can find plenty, both in-game and online, that will not only give you a strong start, but also give you an idea as to what sort of things to look out for when making your own ship fits. Anyone that has enjoyed theory crafting or even kitting out weapons and attachments could spend hours and hours here. As with the simulated fit, you can mix and match modules without purchasing them to check stats and forge that killer build. Progression through the game comes as you would imagine in a sandbox MMO by the way of assets and wealth, as well as acquisition of power if that's the way you choose to go, but also through the game's skill system. Each skill has to be learnt over a period of time and with such a large spectrum on offer, allows for, especially in the early game, being able to focus down on areas of interest, such as hacking or drones. The skill system helps provide the player with the feeling of progression, even after you are spawning after yet another one of your ships are destroyed in the harsh climates of space. Another area of the game that can feel slightly overwhelming with so much variation, but after some looking up, easy enough to get the grip of in the early stages. Being a free-to-play game, and by that I don't mean a game that's just without a mandatory subscription model, but a game you can download and play completely for free, there would be, as one might expect, monetization. This comes primarily in the form of Omega Time, the game's optional subscription model, as well as Plex, the game's paid-for currency. The former is an upgrade to your account, lowering skill timers and granting you access to additional ships. Quite a large number of ships, I might add which in my opinion is slightly on the excessive side, but players wondering if having Omega will stop you from venturing out to enjoy the activity of your choice will have more than what they need to do so in the base game. Being the first impressions, I'm yet to see the full impact of the more specialized ships behind Omega, as most seem to be variants of existing vessels just with more focus bonuses and buffs. The Plex currency can be purchased with real money, as well as the in-game currency called ISK allowing wealthy players to buy their Omega Time essentially for free. But this does suffer from the similar drawbacks of systems such as World of Warcraft's WoW token, where you can also buy in-game currency for real cash. And when first starting out, this can seem very tempting, as goes quickly into the hundreds of millions. It's a free-to-play game, so these elements are to be expected, and it's on your head if you want to pay for your ISK with real money. But for me personally, 
I like the feeling that I've grinded my way to a better ship or a superior loadout, as opposed to simply cracking open my wallet. With my lack of experience with this game and its monetization model, I highly recommend checking out Ace Face's video on EVE's monetization. For those that are thinking about trying the game and want to know more about the payment model in detail, he also does some great new player guides. During my 50 or so hours taking a first look at EVE, I completed agent missions across a range of career paths, jumped into a few of the more story-focused epic arcs, much larger scale campaign missions, battle through abyssal space instances with a few friends in group PvE content, as well as spent many hours exploring and hacking into data and relic sites in uncharted parts of space accessed through wormholes. One of the biggest feelings I felt while doing so was that of surprise. I had seemingly stored away EVE Online as a space spreadsheet simulator that only the most hardcore of the hardcore played. And the more time I spent in the game, the more I saw features and elements that appealed to me as someone who considers myself more of a fan of the traditional running around with a sword and staff MMO. Not just this, but I also experienced just how impactful and exciting having a large open world with so little in the way of restrictions could feel. At one point I was hacking a relic site in wormhole space and a player destroyer came up on my scanner barreling towards me, leading me to hurriedly scrambling to complete the hack and initiate a warp to blast to safety in the nick of time. Another moment I had again gone exploring and after completely screwing up a data site, it epically exploded making my presence known to everyone, so dashed into a wormhole only to find that I had stumbled into the dark dangerous trenches of Nullsec, 77 jumps from home. These moments weren't scripted set pieces or well put together cutscenes. They were byproducts of a truly engrossing and extremely well refined sandbox environment. The PPE content in particular may not have as much cinematic potential as a theme park MMO with a dedicated plotline, but sandbox MMOs can also provide moments that its theme park counterparts cannot, and I have had a blast experiencing some of them. The PvP in the game is a steep learning curve but new players will be able to get back into the fight, with the smaller ships being very well priced. The PvP side of things from what I saw provides plenty of depth. With alongside all-out assault cannons, you're able to obtain equipment to jam scanners, disrupt warps, or web your foe in place for advanced tactics. Working your way all the way up to that absolutely insane looking 6000 plus player galactic faction warfare. EVE, as most will imagine, won't be a game for everyone. If having a great story-driven plotline and a wider range of varied lands to explore is a must for you, then EVE may not be a great fit. If you simply do not have the time to put into reading up and watching guides than the ins and outs of the game, and want something more pick up and play, this isn't it. But I will say to those that are thinking of giving it a go, or may have written it off in the past, that there has never been a better time to take a look at this amazing sandbox MMO. I consider myself, like a lot of you, to be more of a fan of battling through raids and dungeons, but EVE has completely taken me by surprise with just how entertaining, exciting and deeply satisfying it can be. And that's my first impressions of EVE Online, a game that has definitely turned out to be far more than my expectations. It's a great time to, if anyone's looking to give it a try. And if you do, you can use my referral code in the description to get a thousand, no, a million skill points right out the gate. I didn't find this out until after and I was gutted that I didn't sign up. So definitely start with that bad boy if you want to try it out. Let me know your thoughts. And thanks again for all the new subscribers over the last couple of weeks. Amazing to have you here, and I'm really looking forward to making some great content for you guys. If you're looking for more, check out some of my other videos. The next dive in will be returning us back to the sword-wielding, dragon-slaying action. There's a bunch of new and exciting titles on the horizon, so I hope that you'll join me for the ride. If you want kind of a sneak peek into the next video, drop me a follow on Twitch and drop by, as I tend to stream games for upcoming videos, and it's a great laugh hanging out with you guys. Thanks again if you made it this far in the video, you're an absolute legend. Please consider dropping a like as it really helps me out and subscribe for more MMO content. I've got some big plans coming up and we're just getting started. Love you guys. See you in the next one.